What's up, everybody? If you have a great mortgage rate and you wanna keep that mortgage rate and maybe you wanna keep that house, but it's time for a new house, we're gonna talk about ways that you can keep the old house and buy the new house and use that old house as an investment property or even sell it after you've bought the new house. Let's dive in. Hey everybody, I'm Davis Holt. I'm a broker and realtor with the results team at Compass. And the goal of this channel is to be the number one real estate resource for you in Raleigh, North Carolina. We serve the greater triangle area and we're excited to provide this to you. All right, so you own a house, you bought it in 2019, you bought it at a great price and you bought it with an even better mortgage rate, right? So we deal with this situation a lot. In today's world, people who bought in 2019, 2020, 2021, and honestly, even 2022, have mortgage rates that are far better than a mortgage rate that you would find today. So for example, those folks who bought during that time period likely have anywhere from a two and a half to about a 4% mortgage rate. Compare that today as of filming, mortgage rates are back over 7%. And this does make a hard situation. Sorry. And this does make moving a tough decision because you're gonna leave that mortgage rate for a much higher payment on a more expensive home. But as I'm seeing in our marketplace, buyers are adjusting to the new mortgage rate. And quite frankly, I think it's simply because they need more space or they have a life change in their life that makes them need to have a real estate change, right? If you've had another child or you need to downsize, you really can't care what the mortgage rate is. So figuring out how to do that can be difficult, but there's a lot of opportunity in it as well. So here's where we're gonna start. First, if you have that great mortgage rate, odds are that your payments on it are very low. And if you're like most people, you've seen an increase in your wages when, since the time you bought that house. And why that matters is because when you go to apply for the next home, they're gonna take your payment on the new home and the payment on the old home and add those together. And they wanna make sure that you're gonna be able to afford to pay for both houses while you own them. So if you're able to do that, you can get pre-approved for the new house. When you do that, you can start searching and you can start looking online and contact a real estate agent and go look for that new house. Then when you find the new house, you go under contract, you buy the new house, and then you keep the old house. So you're not stuck on a deadline where you're having to move out of the old house you know, within the hour and get into the new house. You're, you don't have to deal with any of that. So it makes moving a lot easier. It makes your life a lot less stressful. And if you have little ones at home, this can be of a huge benefit. So one of the questions that comes along with that is, where am I gonna get the money for the down payment on the new house? Well, good news. Your home that you bought in 2020, the price has increased. So let's say you bought that home for $300,000 and today it's worth $475,000. Well, you can get a home equity line of credit on that house and you can use that home equity line of credit as your down payment on the new house. Now, yes, of course, you're adding debt to your current home, but you have the ability to, after you've moved into the new home, to sell that old house and, of course, pay off your mortgage and the home equity line of credit. Additionally, you could save up or get a gift from somebody to buy that new home, not have to get the home equity line of credit on the old house. And now you have the ability to rent out that old house. And this is something that I'm seeing a lot, not only here in the triangle, but nationwide. And it's a really great benefit for a lot of people because a lot of people want what they consider passive income. Now look, I'm gonna be the first to tell you that I do not consider rental properties passive income. It's honestly anything but passive, right? You're dealing with maintenance, you're dealing with the management of the property. If you hire a property manager, it does become a bit more passive. But if it's something you're gonna do yourself, it's honestly not a, <laughs> the easiest thing in the world to do. And so I would recommend a property manager. But that being said, so let's say your payment on the old house is $1,000 a month and you can rent out that old house for $1,500 a month. You're offsetting your payment on the new house by that $500 difference because you're able to cash flow that old house with the rent. 
Now, there'll be a lot of folks who say, well, you're not factoring maintenance costs. You know, if the HVAC goes out, that $500 a month goes away because you're gonna have to replace that HVAC. And that is true, and I do think it's important to consider that. But in all likelihood, the cash flow offsetting the payment of the new house is gonna benefit you much greater than any maintenance costs that you're gonna have come up over the years. Additionally, I know for a fact that people are looking for alternative investments and they don't wanna be invested just in the stock market. They wanna be invested in real estate, some wanna be invested in crypto, some wanna be invested in just the stock market. But getting invested in real estate is one of the hardest things to do. If you buy a traditional rental property, you have to put at least 20% down. But if you buy a primary residence, you can put as little as three and a half to 5% down. So in that goal, in that instance, you've put 5% down on your primary home. You bought, you stay there for a couple of years. The prices have increased. You buy a new house and now you're living in the new house. You can rent out the old house and all you had to put down was 5%. So again, this is just a scenario. This isn't going to be for everyone, but this is an opportunity for people who live in the triangle and they have a great mortgage rate on their old home, but they need a new home. This is a great opportunity for them to be able to come in, keep that old house and buy the new house and keep both. So the next scenario that we deal with a lot, and this is something that can be a little bit tougher. And I tell people all the time, this is where you have to put your running shoes on, right? So in this scenario, let's say somebody wants to buy the new house, but they have to sell the old house to be able to afford it. Well, here in North Carolina, we don't do contingencies at all. We have no contingency on the sale of an old house like some other states do. But there are ways to figure out how to be able to do this. And the way that I suggest to most people and what I would suggest to you if you're in a position to be able to do it is you start looking for the new house. You get pre-approved for the new house with the understanding that you're gonna sell the old house and that the down payment money for the new house is coming from that old house. You start looking, you find the home that you love, but there's some work going on while you're looking. And here's what that is. You're meeting with your real estate agent and you're getting your house, your old house ready for the market. That means you're doing any prep that you need to do, such as painting or landscaping, any type of cleanup like that. You're also doing any marketing that they're gonna do. So if you're gonna have professional photography done, which we always recommend, you're gonna go ahead and have that done. And the reason you're gonna do that is so that when you find the new house that you wanna buy, everything is done. Your listing is ready. All you gotta do is put it on the market. Otherwise, that could take a lot of time. That can take two, three weeks at a time. And so if you have all of that done, you find the new house, you go under contract on the new house, maybe you do a home inspection or an appraisal. And as soon as you feel ready to go and are sure that you're gonna buy that new house, then you put the old house on the market. Yes, there's some timing that has to line up. And I would recommend that you need to have an expert broker who understands on how to line this up on your side. There's some financial risk with it as well, of course, right? Something happens with the old house and you can't sell it you could lose out on some non-refundable money on the new house. And so do recognize that this is a bit riskier than our previous scenario that we talked about because you could have some money at stake. That being said, this is a great opportunity for someone who has made the decision that their old house just isn't the right house for them anymore and that they need that new house. And not everybody has the ability to keep both houses. And we understand that. So you gotta have an understanding of how you can make that move and make that jump when the time comes. So another question that we get about listing prep is how long does it take? And honestly, it depends, just like everything in real estate, on what your house and situation is. If your house needs some repairs, yeah, it could take two, three, four weeks. If your house is pristine and ready to go, it likely won't take long at all. It's really a determination of what you think is gonna help you maximize the value of your home. If you've painted a room and maybe not everyone is gonna love the color of that room, well, it may be beneficial to paint that room back to a neutral color, and that could take a few days. 
So it really depends on your situation, but a great real estate broker can make those decisions with you. So it can be as short as one week, but the typical time is anywhere from four to six weeks. But we've had clients do it in a week and we've had clients do it in 12 months. So it's really all over the board, but the typical time is gonna be somewhere between four and six weeks. If you get your house ready, it can be stressful that you have your house ready for a listing and now you feel pressure to find the new house so you can get the old house listed. It doesn't need to be that way. You can literally wait four, four weeks, eight weeks, 12 weeks before you list the old house once you've done that prep. There's no pressure to it. It's really more of a matter of keeping what you've done in the old house in good condition so that you don't have to go back and do that work again. Again, we appreciate you watching. If you're in Raleigh or you're coming to Raleigh and you wanna understand the Raleigh real estate market better, let us know. Happy to chat with you anytime. Some of our favorite neighborhoods in the Triangle that we've discovered before, Lockmere, which is in Cary, or maybe you're in to historic properties like Historic Oakwood in downtown Raleigh. You can watch that here. Go ahead, leave some comments. It's us, we will respond. It's nobody else responding. It's us responding. And we look forward to talking to you soon. Again, if this has been valuable, please do subscribe and we'll talk to you soon.